Evening all and welcome back to Kerbalism. So between episodes I've done some more space plane flying around, getting things, we've gone all the way down to the southern ice shelf and all the way up again and our orbital probe has been doing wonderful things, we've got 132 science now which is fantastic but more importantly we fast forward the time and uh, we are three minutes away from Valentina completing the contract. In fact it has been completed which is awesome, that means we can go to Valentina Kern. And here she is up in orbit with uh, no fuel on board. Oh, got 11 meters a second on board, sorry. Okay, I, I was a little confused there. I thought, hang on a minute, that doesn't seem right. Um, maybe our winglet. Ooh. Okay, I must have left some debris around while I'm flying planes. I've been flying the science plane around and uh, I'm not bringing it land again. I keep taking the wings off of it as I land it. It tends to wobble and the wings go off. It doesn't destroy itself. I've not killed anyone. Um, but I've, I've had a few occasions where I've landed, particularly down here at the South Pole. Uh, I've been trying to land here. There is... Um, uh, oh, no. Go to the planet. There is... You've got the southern ice shelf and then you've got the ice cap, which is that mountainous area there. And I'm trying to land there. I've done it three times. I've flown down, landed there, and each and every time, because it's rough land, I end up knocking the wings off the plane, so I've got to recover it. And uh, I think I did it there in the mountains as well. And uh, obviously I've left a bit behind, but but that doesn't matter. So Valentina needs to return, and we are pretty close to the Kerbal Space Center. So why don't we just do that? Let's drop that. There we go. And now we're going to re-enter. Let's point somewhat north Ooh. and uh, fire the engine there which will put our orbit up to a more equatorial one now, I do also want to kind of fire a little bit retrograde as well okay so there we go now we just got retrograde and uh I think that should be good enough. I believe, where are we? 80 with 78k. I think, if memory serves, you put the pointer there and you end up landing here. I might be wrong. It might be halfway in between these two. But we still have fuel. So let's accelerate time and just generally see what happens. And time warp's going to stop us because... But, uh, we have completed our 30 days, which is kind of correct we have. Okay, so the space center is there, so yeah, we're nowhere near the board. So let's fire the rest of the, the fuel. Like that, job done. And uh, I suppose we can drop all this, can't we? Let's do quickly have a look at any science we have. I don't believe we have, oh, we've got did I not turn that on for the entire operation? I don't think I did. Oh well. Let's transfer all the data to here and then we'll drop that bottom piece. Goodbye. And uh, yeah, this does not have any rotational control. It is a giant ball. It's very aerodynamic. So we're probably gonna land in the water. But that's fine. That's fine, that does not matter. We'll be closer to the KSC than I normally do. I'm very rarely ever land at the KSC, even with space planes, I'm terrible at that, I'm normally, I normally aim for it and either end up in the water or up there somewhere because I miss it and turn to get up there, so, yes, goodbye, big runway, and uh, we are a giant ball of fiery death, it's strange, we are very aerodynamic, being a ball, but we do slow down very quickly, which is, quite useful because you don't particularly want to be coming down too fast going boom onion re-entry crew control okay but yeah so so Valentina will return to the surface and uh, mission complete and we did get a little bit of science by uh, getting a crew port when splashed down, which is quite useful. So, that's that contract complete. 
that's why our money's at 1.4 million now. I, I did wonder why that went up. So, what else do we want to do? Let's see, we've got Explore Kerbin, which is rendezvous two vessels in orbit. Mm, we will do that. Not right now. Position a satellite in polar orbit of the moon, or moon, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, position a satellite in equatorial orbit of Kerbin. Rescue Alice from... Rescue Alice. Um, sorry, I've been uh, uh, watching Sword Art Online and... Uh, Alice, yeah, uh, right. Um, we could try and rescue a Kerbal. I kind of want to send a rover to the moon. And Mimus at the same time. Which is a bit greedy, I know, but... It's doable. Position a satellite in... I, I also want to do that. Because we could have our sight and might satellite that we booked before in orbit. Bring green sandstone back with you. Oh, land on Mimus and bring it in. No, 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 not right now. Not right now. Ba -ba -ba. I think... I think I'm going to accept that mission. I'm not sure if we're going to do that straight away. But what I want to do is have a look in here. Uh, what else have we got that might help us? Um, oh, we actually have a deployable thing. I've not used any of these deployable ones. And docking ports. So we could complete docking mission. Um, got new landers and things. Not all that fussed about them. Uh, do eye beams and robotic parts could be useful? Not right now. Uh, fuel, bigger fuel tanks would be helpful. That would help us get to places quicker uh, with fewer parts. So that would help there. Better engines would be really good as well. Oh, oh, actually, actually, I, th I'm, I think we're going to take this one because this will work for the plan that I have. So I'm going to take that one because that engine would be useful. And let me show you the plan. Yeah, see, I have. Um, a mini science rover. I've also got six different versions of the space plane here and a science plane and a automated one which runs on a probe. Um, and yeah, just, just every time I flew it for long distances, I was like, oh, it needs a bit of a tweak. And I just renamed it a new new version of it. So, uh, so you see, yeah, the, the, the eventual version I ended up with is this. It's got a little ring at the front without the canards because they were far too powerful. And if you set that down to an angle of like one and deploy it, just so that tips down just a tiny bit. This plane will take off and fly on level flight all on its own. We don't need SES, don't need nothing, it'll fly on its own. And it has here, tucked away inside the tail, a probe core. So, sorry. the problem I had, that as it lands, it wobbles from side to side, and because these wings are quite low down, they touch the floor, smash off, and you end up, yeah, dead. But that's not why we're here. We're here for this. This is my little mini science rover that I built uh, to drive to the mountains near KSC. And I thought, actually, do you know what? This would work on the moon and on Mimus. It, it would, it would, it would work. It would work everywhere. It's got an antenna in the top, which is great. Um, so it would, it would do wonders. The only problem is that I do kind of need. Ah, see, see, these antennas have got what's called direct. The antenna type is direct. Um, which means they only talk back to the KSC, whereas these are relay. They can bounce between different relays. So if I put a probe in the orbit of the moon with those on it, and do those antennas talk to those ones? I am really not sure. I don't remember. Oh god, I don't remember which which way. I'm, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to say that the, these normal antennas can talk to these ones. Uh, they can go direct, they can go one hop, so they can go from here to somewhere else. And these ones can take a signal in and beam it on somewhere else. So this will be able to talk to a probe with this in orbit, and this will be able to talk back to Kerbal, which is important when you're on the Doctor of the Moon. And these can go to the moon and do science and just send it back and drive around. Because there was something else I discovered, um, which completely by accident, that is a feature I think has probably been in Caspi for a long time that I didn't know about.
If you remember an episode or two ago, oh, that needs to be turned up, uh, I mentioned something called trim. If you hold the alt key and press Q, E, W, A, S, or D, uh, you will change these ones. Normally, if you press W, that, that goes back and forwards, see there, and then you got your and Q and E change the role. If you hold alt and push those, Instead of this pitch changing here, it changes and stays permanent. So if I hold W, you'll see the pitch lowering, like so. You'll also notice the rover moving. Then if I let go of the whole keyboard, the pitch stays there. That's trim. It's designed to allow a plane to fly when it's uneven. So you can you can trim slight your nose slightly up or slightly down, and it will keep the the plane level. What I wasn't aware of was that trim affects wheels. Rover wheels that have motors inside them. Um, if you set a trim like here, I've set it to halfway forward, and I've got my S, my um, reaction wheel set to SAS only, so they won't uh, react to this here, so it won't flip over. This will just drive forward on its own. And if I hold all and just press Q once, uh, oh, he says. The Q. No, sorry, A. It's not Q. Q is roll. What an idiot. Press A once, my yaw will turn over, and you'll see it's turning all on its own. It's got a slight turn to it. If I point the camera straight out, you'll see there it goes, it's turning, it's driving all on its own to And you can essentially just do this and watch watch the gameplay itself. Which is what I do with planes. I, I set the trim up so they pitch up ever so slightly, and then I just watch them fly around, which is it's quite nice. Quite nice. Um you just do minor minor maneuvers to make them mismanage and things, but but we can go to the moon with this. This could happily go to the moon and Mimbus and fly around. But it can't land on the moon. It's got no way of landing because it's, uh, it's a rover. So we need to build a thing that would allow it to land. Which, where our, um, that engine. That's where that engine comes in. So bring this to a stop. We'll recover this. We'll go back to the space plane hangar and we'll have a look at putting some engines on this so it can land. Okay, so the easiest way would be to put a tiny fuel tank on it, like that, and then put this engine on the back. Like so, and if we change this to be the moon. We've got 1.62 thrust to weight ratio, so we can land this. This this this, this could land this at 900 meters a second. Let me quickly bring up my Delta V chart, which I've not ever linked in the comments below. I should really do that. Most people know about it. Uh, the website is 13375.de slash KSP Delta V map. And uh, it's um very, very helpful. It, you, it allows you to basically go, say we're in low orbit of the moon, and I wanna get to the surface. It tells me I need 640 meters a second. That's 948, so that would land. That would technically be able to land on its engine and then fall forward and bounce on the wheels and be fine. And then drive around on the moon, getting all the wonderful, wonderful signs. So I, I like that. I like that. What I need to do, however, is get two of them. I need two of them in a rocket to go to the moon drop this one off in orbit go off to Mimbus drop another one off in orbit also drop a probe in polar orbit of the moon I'm gonna need more than I currently have a bit ambitious plus I don't have any fairings of any description um, I think it might be a little ambitious what I'm trying to do here. Unfortunately, none of the service bays we have are big enough. These, these sort of container bays, you, they just have an inventory. You can't actually uh, open them up uh, at all. The only service bay that you can physically open is... That's six slots. No. Um, is in agility or is it in there's one here yeah this one here the service paint that's the only one you can open and we can't fit what we want to fit in there so 
So maybe I need a little bit more science. Maybe we actually need to unlock some form of fairing. Where are fairings? Where are they? Are they here? Nope, engine cells. Advanced construction? Yes, there's fairings. <clears throat> it's not a very big fairing. But it is a fairing, and there's the big fairing there. Okay, so we need to unlock this before we do it. So let's instead send a rocket with a probe to Minmus at uh, the moon and Minmus. One or both. So you may recognize this from the last episode. This is our orbital probe that's currently in orbit going around Kerbin. Um, I don't know whether it's got all the science yet. It might have done, I'm not sure. But the reason I struggled to get in the orbit is because I fired it off that direction and I wanted to go that way. Uh, but now we want to go this way because, well we do. If we fire this up and get this into orbit, uh, normally then it can go to the moon it's got enough delta v to quite happily get to the moon and um yeah these delta v charts are a bit weird because they're actually growing as they get further up which is just completely throws you off um yep i know why it's doing that i, I understand that it's because gravity is less as you get further away and the atmosphere is thinner so the engines are more efficient but I really wish that didn't do that. I really wish that showed you the Delta V as it was, but I don't know. I don't know. I know nothing. Okay, but we're gonna get. We're gonna go into orbit. We're gonna go to the moon, and we're gonna put this in polar orbit. That's the idea. And then it can do all of its stuff that it's currently doing in orbit of here, in orbit of Kerbin, because we have one in orbit there uh, around the moon. And then we send one to Mimus as well, because we don't want to leave Mimus out. That, that, it'd be a shame. Mimus, Mimus is a nice little place. Not made of mint ice cream. But, uh... But it is somewhere we want to go. Lots of science to be had. Okay, so let's get up here. Uh, ourselves into some form of orbit. I'll do, I'll do. Fire the engine there. That's a bit down, don't do that. Fire there, fire level. There we go. Really inefficient. My my gravity turns, uh, well, my lack of gravity turns, I should say, are really inefficient. We, we should be over there somewhere by now, really. I, I need to get them much better from to be far more efficient but uh I'm not worried we, we over engineer these rockets a little bit so yeah not all that fussed about it uh, where is the moon the moon is there it's just target the moon is in the opposite direction to where I currently am I could have just fired straight up and got to it all right no, that's behind us so no that wouldn't even work either it might have done, it might have been there when we got there, but... Ooh. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I need to get my gravity turns much better, because this is way off. I, sh I should not be on this stage until I'm... I, I should be able to get to orbit on that previous stage. Um, yeah, my calculations are way, way off. We're no longer entering. Awesome. Right, so we want to walk around to about here somewhere. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Probably want to deploy our two. Um, antennas as well. All probes do have an antenna inside them, but it can't be used for transmitting data. Which I do actually understand. I, I do, I do get that. It's um, purely a control system. It's not designed for transmitting data, even though it has an antenna range. 
yeah, I don't... I don't get why it couldn't be used to transmit data, but that's just the way things are. Uh, let's walk round. Could make a maneuver node. Oh, we're almost at oh dear. Oh dear, no 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 no. Uh, didn't really want that. Um Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, hold on. This doesn't have an alternator. No. Stop the engine. Oh, crap. I no longer have any control of this vessel, and it is firing its engine at about half throttle. And I'm not going to get any control of this engine until it's way past the moon. So I don't know where this is going. Basically, I, I have absolutely no idea where this is going. Uh, I could time warp with that turn the engine off. Maybe. I feel as if that would be cheating if I did that though. So I'm not going to. Nope, I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake. This is this is wrong. And uh, it's because all the science reports were going on it. I think. Although, a lot of them shouldn't be going. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Either way, we are going... Ironically, we would have met the moon. Oh, yeah. No, well, let's just let it go. Let's just let it go. And, uh... I think it's firing with the planet, so it's actually going to have a larger orbit. Yeah, look at that. Look, it's going to pass uh, Luna. It's going to carry on. I'm, I'm, I don't want to time walk because I'm concerned it will turn the engine off. And I don't want to do that. So uh, I can do physical time warp because that, that's fine. That's That allows you to do things. This is going to go past Jewel. Wow, I did not know I even had the ability to get to Jewel. Don't have the antenna range, it's well out of antenna range. Yep, and... Doom. Oh, the engine failed. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the engine failed with... A tiny amount of fuel on board. So it must have used up all its burn time. Because I didn't say it to be a high... one. Yeah, so... This is going off into infinity and beyond and it will get a charge again because solar panels and it might even i'm going to turn the radiation scan the temperature scan on might as well it might even pick up some science for us at some point and uh transport it back i don't know but it's going interplanetary i think we had something else that went interplanetary i don't know yeah i think that's that one there isn't it that's yeah the moon flyby two i want to say i'm getting really bad at trying to fly by the moon Let's, uh... Let's let this go, and, uh... We'll, we'll, we'll try again. Well, that didn't quite go according to plan. We had an engine failure. And uh, this is not going to get anywhere whatsoever. So uh, I suppose they say third time's a charm. So should we go for that third time's a charm? Mm, none of the engines seem to fail on me. That's good. Uh, I'm going to wait until we get to uh, my aircraft is two and a half thousand, and then I'm going to turn off the SES and let the gravity, the gravity, let gravity pull it over. Two and a half thousand. They were. And see where that takes us, because I'm being far too shallow on my turns. I think the issue is that these engines are just too powerful. It's just pushing the ship up as it goes. But, uh, that's better. I remember something saying that by, was it 10,000 meters? By, by 10,000 meters, not the actual uh, 
wrap up. So by the time this is 10,000 meters, you should be at about 45 degrees, which I'm not. But that was a long time ago, I remember seeing that. So maybe we're making it into a bit. Oh, we've got radiation scan. Oh, yeah, I guess we haven't done a radiation scan this high up. So, yay. Okay. Uh, what if I switch to orbital quite early on? Does that even matter? I don't think it does. Push the nose down. Let's just do that. Uh, let's steer the thing. Let's not let gravity do it for us. Let's actually steer the damn thing. Ooh. Come on. Oh yeah, turn the SS on. That would help. Right. This seems better. So we, our apparatus is just just going to peek over the top of the planet's atmosphere and we're getting much more horizontal speed. That's what you need. Hor hor vertical speed's good. Coming up's good, but horizontal speed is what you need to actually get into orbit. You basically need to go that way fast enough so that when you fall down, you miss the planet. That's the idea. Which is much easier said than done. Um, and I could get to 75 and then stop and then just coast up to it. Let's see where we go. Uh, the difference between this and the previous craft is I have added a battery there and i have added loads of different things here power high power low turn things on and off you know change everything going you know when we end, when we leave the atmosphere turn on our antennas that sort of jazz so uh hopefully we're now being a bit more careful with our power which would be good. I'm not going to quite make it into a bit with the main engine, but this is much better. Much, much better. I just need to get my gravity turns better. Because I'm still struggling for that. So that's 100k. That's way out further than I want it to be, but doesn't matter. Let's set the moon as our target. Let us turn off the SAS. Push ourselves around to try and charge these batteries a little bit, because I think they're... No, they are getting a charge. That's okay. And uh, we want to walk around to kind of the apparatus, I think. Maybe a bit more. Uh, let's just go around and see. Hopefully our batteries don't run flat. Uh, that button there changes it from how much you've got to how long you've got. So we've got 20 minutes worth of battery here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Turn that off, turn that off. And we should be seeing the moon rising anytime soon. If I stop us there, there's the moon rising, fire the engine. I could do maneuver nodes, I've got maneuver nodes, but I like doing it by sight. I'd like to figure out how to get that by sight via um, Mimus, that'd be nice. How, how do you fire to Mimus? Well you can't, because you can't see Mimus from the planet <laughs> with the naked eye. Uh, it's over there, directly behind us. Uh, nope, can't see it. Okay. Oh, I don't know how you do that. There's probably a way. Probably a way. There's that other probe going up and coming back down again. That's going to crash into the planet. Okay, so... There we go. Right. Oh, another thing I've done as well is I've upgraded all the engines to be... Uh, more. Uh, oh, stop, 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 stop. So I've upgraded all the engines to be higher quality. That's the word I'm after. So now with this engine, we have 39 missions and 22 minutes. Why doesn't that seem like it's changed? Hopefully I didn't know the wrong craft. I don't think so. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Where are we going to come from? Are we going to come from? Hey, we're coming in the right direction. That'll do. That'll do for a minute. I think we need to get further out. Now, if we were to add a manoeuvre here at the descending node, And do something like that. Do, 
Morgan. We'd have to do a kind of plane change so we get closer to the moon. But that's not impossible. And we probably do have the Delta V for it. Then we add another maneuver there. And we'd have to do something like this. And something like that. Uh, oh. mm -hmm. Aha. A bit more. I get it kind of lined up there. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. That looks good. That's almost perfect. It probably would be forgiving enough to let us have it there. But let's try and make it as close as we can. Something like that. That looks pretty close to me. That's what we want. Okie dokie. So we've got a 25 meter second there. And then if we unclick from that and then mouse over it. We've got a 436 meter second there, but we've got 2000 meter second, so we're good. We're good, providing this engine doesn't decide to go kaboomy on us. We're good. Might turn down the thrust limit on it. Because um, it says a one second burn time, and I don't like just frying the engine and stopping because it's really difficult to control how close you're getting to a node. So, um, as I was saying before, if you turn down the thrust, your burn time ends up being longer and you get more control. There we go. At 4% is a 25 second burn time, so at 10% it's going to be like a 10 second burn time. There we go. 10 seconds is good. You get so much more control doing it that way. Okay, so let's just fast forward time a bit more. We want to fire at about 10 seconds. I'll do it in map view because then I can see exactly where this line ends up. Woo, I missed it. And try and get the the no the line lined up perfectly well with that purple one there. There we go. Sorted. Bomb. Next one is 400 meters a second and wants us to be facing that way. So let's get lined up on that one. That says a two minute burn, so what we'll do is we'll turn the engine back up for that one. And it suddenly becomes a 16 second burn. Yeah, I'm fine with that. 16 seconds is a good number. Okay. So. So, let's time warp back. Uh, sorry, time warp to there. I don't know if it's Kerbal Space Program itself, or if it is the um, Better Burn Times mod, or even Kerbal Alarm Clock. But, warning, orbital probe batteries are almost empty. Well, it's not us, that's that one. Uh, but when, when you are time warping, when you're going to change SOIs, changing from Kerbin's Sphere of Influence, SOI, to the Moons, or Mimus, or any other one, um, or breaking Kerbin's Sphere of Influence, um, it will automatically slow down the time warp to 50. I don't know if that's a mod or if that's just the game. I'm not sure. But I like it. It's very, very useful. Okay. Let's walk to the next maneuver. Ba boom. Walks us to one minute before the moon. Oh, there we go. You notice the pulse radiation. There we go. We're already getting data from around the moon. That's awesome. That is awesome. There we go. Temperature scans. Awesome, awesome. Um, of course, once we put this in orbit and get the contract complete, we can then change this to having to being for radiation, it's over 9,000. Uh, we can change this to being a, um, it can be high orbit and low orbit, because right now it is low, is that correct? Info. Space high, we're currently space high, so what we want to do is we want to drop our orbit down. But first we need to get into this orbit to con complete the contract. So let's warp down to eight seconds, half the burn time, fire the engine. I always miss that. And keep it somewhere in the blue marker. And hopefully, move on. 
Oh, 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 did that. Contract complete. No, that's test. Oh, hold on, it must be at the bottom then. Wait. Tell me a little bit. Nope. Okay. Oh, there we go. Contract complete. Ba bomb. There we go. Okay. So we've got the new. The new one complete. Position a satellite in polar orbit of the moon. Awesome. I should delete all them. Yes. So we know what we're keeping up with. Awesome. So there we go. We have a. Or po a, a polar in orbit of the moon? No. We have a probe in polar orbit of the moon. And it's gaining all the information. Um, it looks like it's kind of done. It's going to take 57 minutes. High above the poles. So that's going to take a very long time to get what it wants to do. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the apoapsis, or periapsis it will become, down to. Could we say 50? Whoa. Let's find the engine a bit softer than that, shall we? Yeah, let's say 50. And that's definitely going to be space low. I think. Might is not going to work because might is atmospheric, so I don't know why I brought that, but at least I think it's atmospheric. I don't remember what might does. Space low, space high. Oh, just just one space high, and then space low. Uh, oh, it's only planetary. Uh, it's not doesn't doesn't work for the the moons. Only planetary. Okie dokie. So might is no good here, but it would be fine at Duna or whatever. Okay, so now let's warp around to here. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I was down. Uh, light done. Moon space high. Or periapsis. Moon space low. There we go. Okay, so under 50k is low. Or under, I don't know. I don't know what's low and high. But but we are now getting low. So we, we can get both. We can get high and low by doing this. And it will transmit all the data back. And it will be awesome. I am going to change this to say, don't worry about battery or supply, or we'll leave reliability in storm one. Um, and then I'm also going to go to the other one, info the other orbital. The one in the sun? Oh yeah, yeah, and the one in the sun I'm just going to turn everything off. I don't, I don't care about it because it's, it's doomed. And the one in orbit of Kerbin, I want to turn off, I did turn off signal. Oh, I wonder if it was another one that we had that was going up and coming back down to crash. And that's dead now. Okay, yeah. So, there we go. We're going to be getting more science, which is awesome. Because science is always good. So, with the lovely moon in the background. I will thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope to see you again next time. And until then, as always, have fun.